Everybody, welcome to Timothy. Why don't we go ahead and rise as we sing praise to God? I lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one I need. I turn to you and you are always there. In troubled times it's you I see. I put you first, that's all I need. I humble all I am, it's all to you. Yesterday, today, the same. Forever till forever meets no end. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. You are the way, the truth, and the life. We live by faith and not by sight for you. We're living all for you. truth and the life we live by faith and not by sight for you we're living all for you one way jesus you're the only one that i could live for one way jesus you're the only one that i could live for one way Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. Always live for, I could live for. Once again, good morning, everybody. Please take a moment and wave at those people who are in your general vicinity. Or if there aren't people in your general vicinity, wave even bigger, maybe. We are so glad to have you here, whether you're here with us in person or joining us online. We're glad that you could join us this morning for our worship service. Those of you who are here with us, you can go ahead and sit down for a second or two. We're glad to see all of you here. If you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Pastor John Adi. It's my pleasure to lead you in worship today. Uh, coming down from our Artie Mize campus in a little while will be Pastor Rod Lindemann to share the message with us. We also have somebody who's going to be helping us out with the worship service as well, and that's our seminary student, uh, Jake Bellinghausen. Jake was here last week and preached, and he did such a lousy job we demoted him. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not how this works, uh, but he is going to be assisting me in leading worship today. Today. Over the past couple of weeks, we have been journeying down Peter's path. We've been looking at how Peter grew in his faith and trust in God from the time that he was called as a disciple on the Sea of Galilee, how he took those steps out of the boat to walk on the water out to Jesus. And now we're going to be looking at what Jesus says to him at the end of John how he calls us to take those bold steps forward in faith and trust in him. But now let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
God calls on us and says that we can trust him, and that's why we can boldly proclaim that we are counting on God. Let's rise as we join together in song. today comes from 1 Peter chapter 1. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but he was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hopes are in God. 
now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other. Love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today comes from John chapter 21. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And again, Jesus asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Now you can kind of understand why Peter would be a little upset with Jesus asking that same question over and over and over again, do you love me? And biblical scholars think that what's happening there is Jesus is reminding Peter of something that happened just a few days earlier. You remember that after Jesus was arrested and taken and put on trial before Caiaphas the high priest, Peter snuck into Caiaphas's house to see what was going on. And when he was recognized by the people there as being one of Jesus' disciples, he was asked three times, are you one of Jesus' disciples? And three times Peter said, no. He denied knowing Jesus three different times. And Jesus had warned him that this was going to happen, and, Jesus, and Peter went ahead and did it anyway. And so now in the gospel reading, we hear how Jesus asks Peter, not once, not twice, but three times, do you love me? It's a question that Jesus asks us as well. Do you love me? And we may feel like Peter and say, yes, God, we love you. I love you. And yet far too often through what we say, through what we do, through our attitudes and actions, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, we deny Jesus the same way that Peter did in Caiaphas's house. So let's come together now for a moment where we can confess our sinfulness and find forgiveness in Christ. Heavenly Father, we come to you broken and in need of your forgiveness. Hear us now as we confess our sin to you. Lord, forgive us for the times our thoughts, words, and actions do not reflect our love for you. Lead us to be followers of Jesus in and through our lives. Our God is gracious and merciful. Through the power of Jesus' death and resurrection, your sins are completely forgiven. May the Holy Spirit amend your life to the praise and honor of Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have that forgiveness because of Christ's death and resurrection that moves us to praise him. So let's do that now by singing praises about our living hope.
How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where
We have confessed our sins and found forgiveness in Christ, but now let us confess our faith in God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now I'm going to say the words to you that you probably wanted to hear more than anything, except for maybe that your sins are forgiven. You can be seated. I know, that was a long time, but you know what? We want to avoid holy aerobics as much as we can. You know, the sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up. Really get the blood pumping that way. At this time, we are going to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Scripture says uh, that we should prepare ourselves by examining ourselves to prepare to receive this blessed meal. To help us do that, we have these four questions up on the big screen, and I'm going to ask them to you now. Do you acknowledge that you are a sinner? Do you believe that Jesus is your personal Savior? Do you recognize the true body and blood of Jesus present in and with the bread and wine given and shed for you? Do you believe that through this meal, God will strengthen your faith to amend your life? If you answered yes to all four of those questions, you are certainly free to come forward and receive Jesus' body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of, forgiveness of your sins today. Uh, As we do this, the elders will come forward and they will uh, sanitize their hands down here. Uh, We ask that you please follow the direction of the ushers to come forward in family groups. Please do space yourselves out uh, as you come forward to receive uh, the bread and the wine. On the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please come forward, for the table is ready and the meal is prepared. Oh, Jesus. 
hurts and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling me Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling me
the dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle. And I will not fear. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. You amaze me, redeem me. You call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you in both body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for refreshing us through this beneficial gift. Because of your mercy, we pray that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love for all people. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's always exciting this morning as we continue sharing our faith stories. And this morning we have Will Twinter, and he's going to share his faith story and how he had to put trust in God. It's very fitting for today's theme. And so let's take a moment now and watch as Will shares his faith story. Ever since I was little, I've had a big fear of storms. It was this fear that led me to one of the most important moments in my faith. I was seven, and it had stormed the night before. I was really scared it would come back. The rain had not yet stopped, and there were still dark, heavy clouds outside. I really didn't pray as much as I should, but I was so scared that I decided to talk to God. I prayed that my family would be safe and that the rain would stop. The moment I said amen, the rain, which had been slowing down, just stopped. The rain picked up later that day, but God showed me he was listening. I was able to be still and know that he is God, and he listened and answered. That is one of my confirmation verses, Psalm 46, 16. Be still and know that I am God. Knowing that someone is up there and that there is a greater plan and a reason for everything happening makes me feel more calm. I've been scared with many storms throughout my life, but as long as I was able to be still and know that he is there, the storms would begin to clear. Even as we face a scary global pandemic, I know that 
to trust that he is there and it too will eventually clear. Even as my grandma faced cancer, I knew that as long as I trusted God, his plan would be carried out as he wants it. Even when I feel panicked, I just need to take a breath, be still, and know that God is there. But it's not just fear, as I feel stressed, overwhelmed, anger, or really any negative emotion, I can turn to God and know that he is there and is listening to me. I am less afraid of any and all future storms now because I know what to do when storms of life hit. I just need to be still and know that he is God. All right, come here. Good job. All right. I just have to tell a story. I so enjoy having the opportunity to record our students doing these because they often live out their confirmation verse. And so when Will showed up to do his faith story, he was nervous. And I mean seriously nervous. And I was like, it's okay. You can do this, Will. It's not going to be hard. I said to him and tricked him, how would you like to just read through it once so we can just do it? He's like, yes, let's do that. Well, Pastor Rod turns the record button on for sure. That was Will's practice run. Very good. So he was able to be still and know that God was God. And then when we finished, I looked at him and I said, are you good with it? He's like, what? He said, yes, I am. So let's praise God again for the gift of faith for Will. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this gift of faith that you give us, and especially to Will. As he celebrates that faith that he has in you, continue to grow him stronger, Lord, as he places his trust in you and that he remains still following you, knowing that you have his best interests in heart. Lord, be with Will as he becomes a bright and shining light to a world that desperately needs to know about Jesus. And so we praise and thank you for him. Amen. Good job, my man. Let's go. This way. You can go. (laughs) It is important for everyone to grow in their faith. And to help do that right now, we are having special online Faith Roots videos that have been filmed. You guys are familiar with this. We've been doing this for, what, like six months now? And so you know that once you see this preview and see what's going on, you can go to our student webpage, uh, the address is right up there on the big screen to watch the full video with your children. During this time, I will come around to collect any prayer requests that you may have. Hey, Gordy! Hi, Hi kids! Oh. Hi, Miss Sarah! Gordy! Kids! What is Gordy? What, what is on your nose? Did you it's see a, that? It's a, it's a clothes pin. Oh, well, um, why don't we take that off? Oh, no, 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 no. I can hardly no, no. understand no, you. No, 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 no. No, I don't like it when you tell me what to do. Oh, well, Gordy, I wasn't trying to tell you what to do. I was just suggesting that you take the clothes pin off. Well, it's mm-hmm. supposed to help me with the whining contest. Oh. Oh, so you mean you get to be in a contest? Oh, well, I didn't know that. Well, of course, it's my, it's in a, my contest. What's the matter? Didn't you think that I could do it? I hate it when people what? keep thinking that I can't do games, especially oh. things that I'm good at. And I'm good at this one. Well, what game is it, Gordy? It's whining. Don't you know oh. anything, Miss Sarah? Okay, Gordy. Yeah. Um. Hey, I have an idea. What? Hannah, can you come on in and join us? Hi, oh, Hannah. What's going Hannah's on? Hannah's going to join us, Gordy. Gordy. Hannah, I hope you're not as big of an expert at whining as our friend Gordy well, is. Who, who's going to decide this winner? I hate it when there's no winner. I will decide the winner. Oh, and Hannah can't be the best. She's way too cute. <laughs> cute girls don't whine. Well, Gordy, I can whine. Didn't you, you hear, didn't you hear me in the beginning? I whined so much, I ended up with a cornflake box on my head. Yeah, was that your brother that did that? Yeah, uh-huh, that's pretty mm-hmm. good. But just listen to me. I hate it when everyone is whining. Oh, stop your whining, 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 whining. Okay, Gordy. All right, that was a great job. So, boys and girls, I think the winner is... Gordy! Yay, Gordy! <laughs> Hannah, you can go ahead and take your seat, dear. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, I'm, I'm actually 
definitely gonna give Gordy his award. Oh, yeah, do you mind handing what? me that prize what? What? right what? What? there? A before prize? You? Oh, that's exciting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here you go, Gordy. Oh, yeah. A snake. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was expecting mm -hmm. a trophy or something cool, and uh -huh. you just give me a snake. I, I am. I'm gonna give you this snake. Yep. Yeah. Um, and and I'm afraid that is the way that God awards. Whining. Mm -hmm. A rubber snake? Mm -hmm. Hey, Gordy! Hi, Kid Rodney! How hey. are you? Good, it's yeah. good, but I have a big question for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that at 2 o'clock today yeah, yeah, yeah. that the Cleveland Browns will be whining? Oh, boy, will they ever be, because all oh, our Chiefs are going to win! That's right, ready? Oh. One, two, three, go, go Chiefs! Chiefs. Woohoo! <laughs> The Lord invites us to join our voices in prayer this morning as we bring our joys and our concerns to Him. With a little bit of clanking. In addition to the prayers that we've been lifting up uh, throughout the week, we pray in addition, especially this morning, for Aspen Deakey, uh, who is suffering with severe medical issues and is currently in a rather grave condition. We also pray for continuing uh, recovery of the Montgomery family who are currently recovering from COVID. We pray for Tanya Neat's father-in-law who passed away yesterday. For the aunt uh, of Donna Gage, Becky is her name, uh, and she also has COVID as well as a kidney tumor. And we lift up prayers for all those who are currently suffering with COVID-19 and all those who are struggling with marriage issues. Lord, you call on us to take up our crosses and follow you. Help us to follow the example you've given us so that we may live lives that overflow with love and compassion. Fill us with faith that we may boldly follow where you lead us, trusting you and your guidance. Help us to live that faith in our, our daily lives so that we may be a greater part of your work to transform lives through Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with those who are facing difficulties of any kind. Be with the sick, the hospitalized, and those recovering from illness and surgery, especially Aspen Deakey, as well as Donna Gage's aunt. Grant them health and healing according to your good and gracious will. We thank you for the way that you not only hear our prayers, but answer them. Thank you for the many blessings you pour out in our lives, especially our marriages, our health, and the health workers who, who have worked so hard to keep us all safe. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we thank you for the many opportunities that you've given our congregation to make an impact in our community through our care ministries. Bless us as we continue to provide those opportunities in the coming year. Help us to recognize the need in our community and fill us with generous spirits that are ready to share from the blessings you've given us for the greater good. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, as we continue to walk together as a congregation, knit us together through love. Help us to support one another and urge each other on in Christian living. Help us to be bold witnesses to your redeeming love so that many may come to faith in you. Be with our leaders as they follow your lead in charting our future as a congregation. May all that we do give glory to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you minister to us through word and sacrament. As we've received your son's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine, may it continue to work forgiveness in our lives and strengthen our faith for the days ahead. All these things we entrust to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver, deliver us. us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, good morning. I know you're thinking right now, Pastor Rod, can you please make it quick so that we can get to our chief's party? No. God's word is more important. So it's interesting when we think about today being First Fruits Sunday for us, an opportunity for us to give God our thanks, to show Him our trust in Him as we head into the new year of 2021. Our gospel reading today followed the story when Jesus was with the disciples and they were out fishing. And he told them to throw out their nets, and they caught so many fish, 153 fish. And then they see Jesus over on the shore. He hands out the bread, cooks a little fish, and they have a meal. And it was during this time of fellowship that Jesus would look at Peter and say to him probably the three scariest words that Jesus could ask. Peter, do you love me? Well, of course, Peter's excited. Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus says, feed my lambs. But three times Jesus asks this question. Peter, do you love me? We know that this gospel account is really about teaching us of God's forgiveness. Three times Peter denies Jesus, and here we see where Jesus restores Peter, asking him that question, do you love me? You see, in our account today, it also reminds us that words involve action. If we just hear words from people, we might refer to that as just cheap talk. There's nothing behind the words. So when Jesus is asking Peter, do you love me? He's actually calling Peter to action. The reality is, is that love calls for sacrifice. We read about it in 1 John when it, it says, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. God calls us to action. We are given special opportunities in life to show our love. Gentlemen, for you, it's just four weeks away from today when Valentine's comes. When you've said for the last year to your wife, I love you, on that day you get to show it. A call to action, more than just cheap talk. Well, today, as we celebrate First Fruit Sunday, we are also being called to action. Because we too are asked that question, you know, do you love me? The reality is in our lives, our actions show who it is or what it is we really love. It's a love that's filled with action, a love that goes beyond just mere words. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep. Now for Peter, he knew what this meant. It was not going to be an easy job. Sheep are not easy to take care of. They wander off. They drift around. They get dirty. They're not very smart animals. And so when Jesus says, feed my sheep, it's going to require a lot of love and a lot of action. So Jesus isn't giving Peter some job that just may be filled with fun and joy. No, Jesus is calling Peter to something that is truly necessary. And so we have to be 
careful. We learn from this account that talk can be cheap and that actions can actually be quite difficult to show our love, especially our love towards Jesus, because we also might ask ourselves when we think about the shepherd and feeding sheep and how wet they get, are you willing to get wet? Are you willing to get into the dirt and dig to be dirty? Are you willing to run after the sheep when they go and flee? God's calling Peter to action. Peter had to do a lot of dirty work to feed Jesus' sheep. I mean, he went to the house of Cornelius to share about who Jesus was, and he was a Gentile. Peter went out and shared the good news of Jesus to the Galatian Gentiles. Gentiles, people he thought were a disgrace. God called him to go there. Peter had to put up with the criticism of the Pharisees. You're not following the law of Moses. And yet, Peter would go out and feed God's sheep. It was a way that Peter was able to show Jesus that he loved him. When Jesus asked those questions, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And we show that love. And you see, Jesus calls us to that same type of love. Jesus calls us as individuals, as a family of believers, to go out and feed God's sheep. That is what we are called to do here at Timothy in our community. And so the question could be for us, Jesus saying, do you love me? Well, how do you show your love for Jesus? How is it that you show others your love for Jesus, not with just mere words, but with real action? I mean, today I was thinking about it this morning, how we pray for others. We ask our family, our friends to pray for someone in need. And do you stop? Take away the distractions that are going on and pray. Feed my sheep. That's taking care of God's people. That is what he calls us to do. He calls us to be the face of Jesus to our family and to our friends, out in our community, to be a light in this dark world when Jesus says to you, feed my sheep. You might get dirty. It might be hard. It certainly is going to be tough at times, but it's necessary. We're called to feed God's sheep. There are so many ways that we have to do this. Different gifts, different talents, different abilities to show our love to God by answering that question as we go out into the world. But you know, sometimes it's really easy to say, yes, Jesus, I love you when my house is in perfect order and I don't have to spend any money on it. It's easy to say, yes, Jesus, I love you when our families aren't having internal battles or things are going on in life and it's tough. And it's easy to love Jesus when we're praying for somebody we really care about and they're healed. Yes, Jesus, I love you. But what about when our house is falling apart? Families are broken. A family member struggling. And they're not getting better. And Jesus says, do you love me? We're still called to love Jesus in the hard times. Jesus shows the perfect love, a love that is based on sacrifice. Sacrifice is not something that's just easy to do. You have to give up a little bit of yourself. You have to give up some time, perhaps. Jesus said, greater love has no one than this than to lay down his life for a friend. That's the sacrificial love. When Jesus put himself on that cross to die 
for you. Each one of us, as an individual, Jesus went to the cross to do this. Great love is found in sacrifice. If someone needs help, who do they turn to? A close friend? A dear family member? Someone they trust? Probably not just someone who threw out the words, I love you, but someone who has shown their love in action. Jesus has shown his love for us. And so we too were called to this sacrifice. We read in the book of Romans where Paul says, you see at just the right time where we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What greater love can there be than to give your life how could we not want to respond to such love that Jesus showered upon us that we wouldn't want in action to say, yes, Jesus, we love you. You see, Jesus, the Son of Man, didn't come to just seek the healthy, the well-being, but he came to seek the lost. The ones that we consider the outcasts in our lives. The ones that are not in our inner circle. The ones that we're uncomfortable being around. That's who God is calling us to reach out to. But we always have this fear. How much then do I have to love God? How much do I have to show it? Well, we are always reminded that salvation in itself is not based on our love, our actions, our response. We know that it is God who loves each one of us in Christ. God loves us. We also get to live each day with the words of Paul when he says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, angels, demons, and all those things can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We're called to believe and put our trust in God. But when you really love someone, when you really love, it shows in our actions and the things we do. And so our love responds with sacrifice. James tells us in his words that in the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. It doesn't mean that you don't have faith. It doesn't mean that you've lost all faith in God, but faith and action go together. That faith without it is basically a dead faith. And so when we say, yes, Jesus, I love you, the response is in a loving action way. Yes, you know I love you, God. And we are called to that sacrifice. You see, Peter was very embarrassed the third time that Jesus asked them this question. He had a heart for Jesus, but he began perhaps to feel a little doubt, a little scared. He knew that he had denied Jesus three times, important times. And yet here we see that love of Jesus who restores Peter. And then Peter says, as he listens to Jesus, yes, Lord. And Jesus says, follow me. And it's going to lead to your death. Jesus isn't calling us to an easy task to share the good news. Jesus is calling us to get in the dirt of things, to get into the darkness of the world, to share a great life for others. And just as Jesus gave 
Peter a second chance, he gives us a second chance as well. He hasn't given up on any of us. He hasn't given up on what Timothy can do in the community, how Timothy can help transform lives through Christ and make a big impact. He's given each one of us a second chance. Praise the Lord. And then these questions become a little interesting. Do you love me? It's an opportunity for us to look deep within ourselves and ask, what have we done? Maybe it leads us to confession. Lord, I do love you, but perhaps I haven't loved you enough. I haven't gone out and sacrificed and served. Lord, maybe I haven't put all my trust in you, and God gives us the opportunity to confess that for a second chance, starting all over again. These questions aren't meant to scare us. We can also use them to rejoice when Jesus says, do you love me? Oh, man, I do. You have allowed me to serve you, God, in so many amazing ways. You have allowed me to impact the lives of others. I should celebrate that. Lord, you have taken me through times where I can see I placed my trust in you. You were there the full way. We get to celebrate that. And then we could look at this question and go, do you love me and evaluate ourselves? God has called us to trust him into the new year. Like Valentine's, we have this day set aside to show our love for someone through action. First fruits is a special season in life. At the beginning of each year when we can give an offering to God, showing our trust in Him, answering that question, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. I love you with my whole heart. It's an opportunity to listen to God, to take away the burdens that we may feel in our lives. God has gifted each one of us with gifts, talents, abilities to do things that somebody down the chair from you can't do. We get that call to serve, but God also calls to give of our first fruits. It's not required. It's not mandatory. It's not part of our yearly tithe. It's an opportunity to show our love for God and our trust in Him. But we have situations in life that often get in the way. So let's just say, for example, somebody gifted you with one of these amazing Cadillac Escalades. What a nice car, right? You have one of these, you keep it all shiny, you put your family in it, you go out for a drive. One day you're driving in this amazing gift that you have and you're going out on the outer roads and there's somebody stuck way down in the ditch. Well, you're driving an Escalade, a four by four. You can help this person. But in your mind you're thinking, this is almost a $100,000 car. How am I going to hook up another car to it? It'll get dirty. I'm going to get dirty. I have to stop and take time. Jesus says, feed my sheep. We are called to stop in life, to take those gifts those things that God gives us for his good and service, to share with him. We are called to feed God's sheep, to get in the ditch with people, to get dirty, to reach out a hand and to help the lost who are looking for hope. When we do that, we are saying, yes, Jesus, we love you. Feed my sheep. God has called us at Timothy to a great purpose. One, to share the gospel with those in our community. 
to go out and talk to those people that are not our friends, maybe, don't fit the mold of our community, who are struggling, who are dirty, who are waving their hand like the person stuck in the ditch begging for help. Feed my sheep. We offer that hope. First Fruits allows us as individuals to put our trust in God and put it in action. It allows us to tell God we love you and to support ministries of Timothy where we do go out and touch lives, where we, through, the, through Christ himself, transform people into these believers. Last year for First Fruits, I will always remember our leadership meetings and talking about the goal. You know, in the world, you have to have a goal. And to do the ministries that we felt God was calling us to, we would need a $208,000 first fruits giving, above what we thought our general giving would be. They said, no way, we can't do it. I... It's not. It was a long discussion. We talked about how God has given us a job. We have to put our trust in Him. And so we did it. We announced it. We made it a part of our 2020 plan as we felt God leading. In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a time when church was closed for open worship, in a time where many people are living inside, challenged in a different way, at the end of 2020, we hit the goal. Something that was seen as impossible, God did, because we placed our trust in God. And that's what we do this year again. Giving above and beyond for an opportunity to say, yes, Jesus, I love you, so we can feed his sheep. We have that opportunity this weekend to give our first fruits to God in a different way this year because we can't do the offering lines, we can't pass down the plate. But you know what? This is between you and God. You have the opportunity to Put that on an envelope and to leave it in the offering plate as you leave today or some other time as you see fit with God. Those at home have the same opportunity to give their love, their trust in God, and their first fruits offering by doing it online. We can do that in today's technology. Today really isn't about money. It's about sharing that gift God has given to us, our first fruits. These words from Proverbs are quite powerful. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crop. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. It's not a promise that if we give God this certain amount of money that it's going to happen this way. But God says, Trust me and follow me. That's what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. 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 And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. We do want to thank you for your continued support of the ministries here at Timothy. Like Pastor Rod said, uh, if you wish to drop off your offering in the offering plate before you leave, you can definitely do that. Uh, But before we go, we have a couple of announcements we want to share with you. First of all, the youth group has reserved the skating rink for a private glow skate party for all middle and high school youth. Uh, They are all invited. The date is this next Saturday, January 23rd from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The cost is $5. You can visit the student webpage page for more information. 
We have uh, two opportunities coming up for people to connect with our care ministry volunteer opportunities. Those begin later this month. Care 201 is a four-week class that begins January 26th, and Care 301 begins February 23rd. Details are shared in our e-notes, but you can also contact Nancy Novoshevsky, our care minister, for details. Registration is required for both classes. And finally, you are invited to join Pastor Rod in reading God's Word daily, Monday through Friday, by email or on the Timothy website uh, through the God Connect post. You can stay connected to God in 2021 by making a commitment to be in His Word daily. So now we go out from this place called to put our faith into action, to show our love for God by loving each other. So let's rise and join our voices together as we sing, Counting on God.